Hello and welcome to the second part of the cash flow forecast. Um, what I'm going to be looking at today is looking at how we insert the actuals. And you might think, well, I've done a forecast, that's fine, that's what I needed to do for the bank or whatever it happens to do. But the really key thing is being able to uh, estimate what's actually um, going on and then compare that with the actual. So what we need to do is actually put in, and the reason that I left the uh, the columns here is so that I could put the extra for the actuals in and you'll notice that I've actually completed all of the forecast for all the different months for whole year and now I've got a forecast for July and then I've got a total for the year and you'll see that this figure here this time I haven't used auto sum what I've done is I've the a formula I've put in is to add on plus X7 plus V7 plus T7 as I showed you in the previous um, example and the reason for doing that is that because I'm going to be putting other columns other figures in these columns here so when I've done that I then copy that and if you remember to copy it I go uh, right click or command click copy and then just take it down to the one I want to copy it to and just go paste and what it will do is it will just copy that same formula from there to there and I've done that all the way down for the total for the year with the exception of this figure here now you might be thinking what's that figure there that if you remember is our bank balance brought forward and our total is that we had at the beginning when we started out was a hundred so as this figure here, as this column here, it's not just by month, but it's by year, we want to say what's actually happened in the year. And what's happened in the year is that we have put in £100 at the beginning. We've had all these net, the net inflow or outflow, the net inflow is 873. And we've got a bank balance carried forward at the end of July, at the end of the year of 973. So that's what that's telling us. That's what we forecast. Of course, what happens in reality may be somewhat different, and that's really the purpose of this uh, this exercise. So what we do is we put the actual figures in for August. Now, here, if you remember, we had 20 sessions at 35. Now, suppose we only had 15 sessions. Oops. So what we have to do is put equals 15 times by 35. And you'll notice that we've only got 525. Now we can copy it. And if you remember, auto sum. We'll pick up those figures and I can change the where it picks the information up from by doing that. So we've got 525. Now, if we've got cash in of 525 and we expected 700, we know immediately we've potentially got a problem the well slight upside is that obviously our rental income if we are paying on a per session basis will be less so in the same way as there we had 20 sessions at five pounds now because we only did 15 sessions we have 15 at five pounds oops perhaps ah that's one of the things it's worthwhile noting actually if you put something in and it's not it hasn't accepted it as a formula, it's usually because you haven't put the leading's equals sign in because equals is saying, hey, treat this like a formula. Now, assuming that we'd said, okay, our advertising and marketing, oh, we're, we're short, falling short of where we want to do. So we might have said, well, we'll, we'll put an extra um, 30 pounds in, in advertising in there. So we'll put 180 pounds. Subscriptions will probably be the same. So I'll copy that. Stationery may well be the same. C and Apple V or oh, paste travel and subsistence that might be slightly less if we've um, been doing uh, less work postage um, and telephone are probably going to be the same uh, sundries well it might be 15 let's say um, because we haven't done our estimates before we just say right okay we can take out drawings and if you remember 
drawings are our salary that we pay ourselves. Our bank interest might be slightly more because we haven't made as much money and our petty cash is probably 10. So in the same way we can either copy that cell across or we can go auto sum and it picks up all those figures. Now total inflow outflow so we copy and paste and what it's saying is oops we've actually got a net outflow of 101. So bank balance we had 100 pounds to start off with copy paste and now when we pick up this transferring the formulas across. When we've picked up this net inflow of 101, you'll notice that we've actually gone into overdraft. Now immediately that means when we go for our actual in September, um, we will know that we're going to have to pay a lot more bank interest and bank charges. So that's probably going to be about, uh, let's say, uh, £45. So that's just from because we've just gone into unauthorised overdraft. Our petty cash may well be the same. And I'm going to assume that we've actually had a similar number, 15 sessions. And ditto the rental. And we would probably also pay one hundred and eighty pounds to try and uh, try and keep our marketing and advertising up. I'll be talking about marketing and advertising in different um, modules, but the key thing here is just assume that we've uh, done all the other free marketing, etc. That we can do. Um, basically, all the others could be pretty much as we had before. So for speed, I shall just assume that all actuals are the same. Now here is where we have an opportunity. Just, let me just put that, copy that across. Um, so what are some? Oh, now you see it's picked up the wrong figures. So what we want to do is, and I just literally put the cursor where I want it to be, and it'll pick up the right figures. So you see here, We might think, well, um, we have to pick up. Oops, picked up the wrong one. Copy, paste. So this, remember, this is the actual figure that we've had brought forward, and the net inflow in this case would be forty-nine. That might not be sufficient. Um, to carry forward and if you look unfortunately in terms of drawings I haven't put a figure in yet for drawings so that means if we're going to leave any money in there at all we'll have to take no salary out that month or £20. This is why it's really really important to actually look at and control your costs on a regular basis uh, perhaps initially weekly, you can do each of these figures weekly as well as um, monthly um, and to make adjustments. Now making adjustments, what you want to do is try and, best way is obviously to try and increase your income and the next and the way to do that is to spend more possibly time and effort not rather than necessarily cost on advertising and marketing as I said I'll look at that in a different thing and then secondly reducing our costs and if all else fails I'm afraid the way that all self-employed people do it is they pay themselves less I say all a lot of uh, self-employed people so you can see by putting in the actual you can make a comparison the forecast the actual you can actually do a very formal variance as it's called, which is a comparison between forecast and actual, but if you actually look at the two columns you can actually see we've got a shortfall in their income. We've got okay, a shortfall in the um, cash going out as well, but that's mainly because we haven't paid ourselves. 
So this means that going forward you'd need to make some further adjustments. So for example, reducing the drawings, increasing your income, reducing your expenditure in order to keep control. And that's it. Um, and good luck with that. As I said, keep it simple.